Hi, Tile from Interfidelity here at Big Sound 2015 with our fourth guest, Roy, uh, known as Romaz on the boards. Although he doesn't post a whole lot, he certainly does quite a bit of lurking from what I've uh, talked to him about today and has uh, quite a bit of experience um, with a broad number of headphones, including electrostatics and um, quite quite a bit of gear over the years. And uh, it was great fun having you here today, Roy. Thank you for coming up and visiting. Thank you, Pat. Um, the first question is, um, how did you find the uh, blind testing sessions this morning? Well, I knew a little bit of what to expect based on the fact that I've done some blind testing before, was very humbled really by not being able to distinguish between power cords and cables to the extent that you know other people seem to be able to. And then of course, I benefited from the previous guests and realized that this was just not gonna be one of those things that would be easy. Yeah, and um, the results <laughs> were uh he we initially started with the hd 800s the bakun the teton and the sim moon and he got um basically a near perfect score he had one guess missed but otherwise got all the way through there we switched over to the he 1000s and again a near perfect score with one miss at the end, probably due to a little fatigue. <laughs> My guess is the first one was he was getting a little cocksure, and then the second one he was getting a little tired of doing it. But man, you did a great job on the listening tests. Probably better than I thought. Yeah, really a great job. It was very, very interesting to see. And that makes it doubly interesting uh, to hear Roy's impressions of uh, all the headphones and amplifiers. He um, is in the market for some headphones and, hip and amplifiers right now and has really spent a lot of quality time um, going through them. So um, we're going to ask uh, Roy to just go through each uh, headphone step by step and then through each amplifier step by step. So if you'd stand up and we, uh, we'll just go through them bit by bit and... Um, you can give us your uh, basic impression. Well, the, the Audio Zenith surprised me only because my expectations after um, hearing Bob yesterday uh, weren't very high. And uh, to be honest, I'd never really heard these phones before. I know they're a, a modified uh, version of, of the Oppo. I was quite impressed. Um, I thought, you know, one, I, I knew I, I like planers and, and uh, I like the fact that they can, you know, as far as tonal balance, they can generate bass. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, uh, that was the case. Uh, and, you know, probably a big part of why I like this headphone is comfort. Um, similarly to uh, Todd, who was here, you know, he indicated that he likes to listen for long periods of time. And so he factors that into his headphone selection. I, too, like to listen for prolonged periods of time. I don't like to, um, you know, be feel fatigued after a track or two and I, I, I factor in comfort and mm -hmm. this is a very comfortable headphone easily one I could wear for hours certainly one I can travel with I think uh, because of its high sensitivity you can plug it into a variety of devices and have a very good time with it mm -hmm. so I think if I had to have one headphone did a lot of traveling um, I would have no problems having this headphone be it okay good and then the Mr. Speaker's Ether um, the Ether, also my first time hearing it, um, very good. I thought that it wasn't as resolving as some of the others that I, I listened to. Very pleasant sounding, um, probably non-offensive in many ways, could play well with all the amps here. Um, I didn't list it in my top four, but certainly if someone said, hey, this is what you've got to have, I would have no problems with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the uh, Enigma Acoustics Dharmas. The Dharma surprised me. I didn't know what to expect with this. I, I come from a Stax background, having owned a, a set of uh, SR009s in, in Blue Hawaii, uh, as well as a, a KG SSHV. And so I, I knew what that sound is like. Um, reason why I left uh, electrostatics is it just didn't have the tonal balance for me. It was it was lacking in bass. If you're if all that I listen to is classical music, it, it's a perfect setup. But because I have uh, broader interests in terms of genre, I felt like I needed something that could play to those genres. And boy, this headphone 
while it doesn't quite have the uh, the treble qualities of the stacks, it sure has more of the bass. It certainly is more tonally balanced to me. Um, I actually, of if I had to do my ranking, this would be a number two for me. Mm. Um, it just uh, did most of the things that the stacks does well, and yet it has the bass that the planar magnetics are known for. Mm. Um, this has to be paired, I think, with a, a special type of amp, but this is certainly um, a headphone I would have no hesitation owning. Cool. And then the Hi-Fi Man HE-1000. This is a special headphone. Um, it's one of those um, jack-of-all-trades, some would say master of none, but for me it was a master of enough. Um, for long-term listening, this headphone is it. Comfort, um, there is a softness to it that it can be criticized for, yet with the right amplifier, this headphone is exquisite. It, it's very detailed, yet airy, wonderful mid-range, good treble, very solid bass. Um, I think that, uh, you know, with the wrong amp, it can sound too soft. It can have too soft of a leading edge. Uh, the transitions may not be as, as sharp as you want for certain kinds of music. But boy, this amp uh, for prolonged listening um, just does it for me. I could mm. see myself being happy with this amp for a long, long time. The headphone, yeah. The headphones. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then the Odyssey LCD3? Um, I have a fair amount of experience with the Odysseys. They are obviously very dark. They're known for being very laid back. If you are wanting to sit down and sit back and chill, no problem with this headphone. Uh, taken in isolation, it doesn't sound dark at all. It sounds very good. It sounds very pleasant. But when you start to compare it, it always sounds a little bit veiled. And that was my only issue with it. In comparison, this doesn't stand as tall as many of the other headphones here. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's a, a very fine headphone. I think the phaser elements did a lot to you know, bring out a little bit more transparency. But, and it pairs very well uh, with, surprisingly, the Teton and, and a few of the others. But... Um, it would not. It didn't make my top four. Okay, and then the Sennheiser HD 800. This surprised me. I used to own a pair of um, HD 800s years ago. Um, it was one of those headphones that I was really enthralled by when I first listened to it. Brought it home, and then said to myself, "Boy, what was I thinking? This just doesn't sound anywhere as good as I recall." And I ended up returning it. Um, and so I, I really never went back to it. Had very low expectations coming into it, despite all of the. Despite the fact that the, the people that preceded me really like this headphone, um, as I listen to it today, clearly this is a different sound than what I recall. Yeah. And I have to attribute that to the mod and perhaps yeah. the, head, the, the amps that I paired it with. But this is a special headphone. I didn't think I would like it at all. It, it made my top four. Mm, cool. Uh, and then, of course, the Stax headphones, the 009s and the 007. Uh, which you have some familiarity with. Yeah, this is um, um, my first prolonged exposure to, to the 007s. It is a darker sound. Uh, I prefer more the 009s uh, with um, this KGS SHV um, and with the Blue Hawaii. I, I think uh, just for my taste, uh, you know, the, the stacks, the 009 is known for a certain brightness in the treble. I've had issues with it with certain electrostatic amps. With the Blue Hawaii I used to own, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. It just didn't have the tonal balance that I was looking for. It was lacking in the low end. Yeah. Other than that, it would have, I would have still owned that headphone. And the uh, LCD X, any uh, any reasonable or comments of difference between it and the LCD three? Yeah, you know, I um, I used to like this better than the LCD three. In fact, um, uh, I was targeting this headphone once upon a time. It, it had the bass that I was craving that the SR009 was, was lacking. Uh, but upon further listening today, as I compare the two, I actually like the LCD3 better mm -hmm. with the right amp. Mm -hmm. um, this one plays great at low levels. As you, as you turn it up, it starts to break up a little bit. It doesn't quite have the same resolving ability as the LCD3. Okay. That would be my only complaint. And then uh, the um, JPS Labs Abyss back here. That is also a very special headphone. And obviously, um, it requires um, a certain amp to be able to drive it well. Um, it is a very direct, upfront sounding headphone. Obviously, it has a, a, a fair a good amount of bass slam. 
um, it pairs exquisitely with the Wu 234s. If I, um, if this was going to be the headphone for me, I certainly would very much like to own the Wu's to pair it with. The, the two go well in, uh, together, especially for certain genres, for classical music. Um, very few things would sound better than that combination. Cool. And then, since you really did so much uh, work today on the amplifiers, let's go down the row of the amplifiers. We'll start at the very end here with the Bakun uh, supposedly current source amplifier. Um, I didn't know what to expect with this. Uh, first time I've heard anything like this. I've read about it. Uh, you know, I know that there's been some very good reviews. Um, and surprisingly, um, I liked it very much with the HD800. I knew I would like the HD800 with the Teton, and uh, you know, I, I expected that to be the case. I thought that pairing would rise to the top, but in this particular case, I thought this was my favorite amplifier with the HD800. Huh. It, it added a certain lushness to the HD800 that the HD800 can benefit from. It, the, the, that headphone has a tendency to sound clinical sometimes, mm -hmm. too much so, and this... Um, brought about some emotion hmm. that I think that, that headphone lacks. Cool. And next uh, up is the Eddie Current uh, Black Widow. I was surprised by this headphone. Um, I, I'm sorry, this amplifier. If um, cost were an issue, if you were looking for value, this amplifier would be it. Um, it has a good presence. It has good authority of its base, good grip. Yet there's also a tube quality to it, a, a, a fullness in the mid-range, a lushness that certain headphones here really benefit from. Um, I would say, surprisingly, this is a headphone that rose to the top for me. It wasn't my favorite pick um, of all of these amps, but certainly could uh, pass as a number two or a number three. Mm, excellent. And then uh, the Burson. Um, I've heard the Bursons before, uh, primarily the soloist. Um, this, the Burson sound is, is great. It, it full body drives many things well. Um, has a tendency to be a little bit bright for me. That was my only issue. Okay. So for that reason, I had a hard time with it. And the Violectric V two eighty one. Somehow this this amplifier, while very good, didn't stand out. It didn't differentiate itself. It didn't have. Uh, any top strength compared to some of these other amps. And so while it has no faults for the money that, that they're asking, I'm not sure I would I would buy that. Okay. Fine. And then we have the head amp GSX Mark II. Um, I've had experience with this amp as well. I kind of knew coming in what it would sound like, uh, but surprisingly it sounded better than what I recall. Mm -hmm. It paired the best with it with the HE one thousands. It uh, you know, the HE1000 has a tendency to sound soft. This has a tendency to sound um, very authoritative and upfront, and the two grip balance very well. Uh, the tightest grip, the, the, the authority it has, it just was second to none. Mm. Um, if I had to buy a solid state amp for especially the HE1000, this would be my go-to amp. Cool. And then the uh, the uh, TTVJ uh, Apex Audio Teton. Um, I liked it very much. If you're looking for something that's to the point, uh, to that, that basically plays things straight up, this is a wonderful sounding uh, amp. Obviously, you're listening to the tubes without the transformers, so um, you can vary the sound signature just by changing the tubes around which is very nice. I knew it would pair well with the HD800, but surprisingly, I, I enjoyed it with, with some of the planers. And so this is certainly not a one-trick pony. Um, some comment on the cosmetics. I have no issue with that. I think, uh, obviously, it's a very sound amp, and um, it's a bit high on the price, but uh, no faults. Yeah. And, of course, the, uh, the giant Wu 234 uh, monoblocks. Uh, cost no object, um, this could be the best amp here, as it should be for the money. Uh, it, it's paired, it's utilizing the Takatsuki uh, drivers as well as the, the power tubes, uh, supposedly the best there is. Um, pairs very well with the Abyss. The only problem I have with it, it doesn't have 
the authority that I thought it would have. And certainly not in the level of the GSX. Um, it doesn't play certain headphones as well as I thought it would. Mm. I was hoping that the pairing with the HE1000 would be magical. Somehow it was not. Mm. Um, it, I just prefer this headphone to a different amplifier. Um, so because it's so much money, because the expectations were so high, um, somehow they weren't met. Okay. And last but not least is the uh, Sim Audio Moon 430HA. Um, I've had some experience with this amp. I've heard it with Abyss. It sounds excellent with the Abyss. If I were to buy an Abyss uh, and a solid state amp, I would have no issues with that pairing. It was probably the only pairing I liked it with. I At least um, only because of the presence of the GSX Mark II. Mm -hmm. This weren't here. I think that would rise to the top as far as my favorite solid state amp. But because of the presence of the GSX, this just sounds a little bit soft to me. It doesn't have the authority. Great, great, mm -hmm. great air, great space. Um, very powerful. Will drive probably any any of the cans here. But compared to the GSX, it just wasn't quite as good. Cool. And and then one uh, last question. And and um, I'm I'm going somewhere with this one a little bit, but um, overall the sound quality that you heard in this room, how would you characterize it against other experiences with high end headphone audio you've had before in the past? Um, as good as there is, you know, there's a few others I'm curious about. There's a, a new headphone that's out in Europe called the Kennerton Odin that supposedly is nothing like any of this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about that, but it's, uh, outside of that, it's as good as I've heard. But I mean, in terms of um, when you've heard rigs in other places and stuff like that, did you find that the quality of sound of all the gear here in the room was quite high? Absolutely. You know, you're looking at um, a, your front end of a, a render that uh, goes for 16 plus thousand dollars. I don't know that you can get better than that. Um, your power regeneration, the, the, the cables that you've got. I mean, uh, hard to imagine a better setup, but as far as my own experience, absolutely. It's as yeah. good as I was expecting. You know, um, uh, um, I'm going to say this, and, and I'll say it again and, and, and in greater detail, but I do think that cables and things like power regeneration and, and stuff do make small differences. It's differences that would be very difficult to A-B test and blind test, but small, subtle differences that are additive. And, and in the end, you end up with gear that is um, really, really uh, terrific sounding. So it, it gives me a great deal of confidence to have used uh, cables from Cardus and Nordost and uh, AudioQuest and, and uh, Cable Pro and all these various places. Uh, and, and I think in the end, it does make a difference um, for the listening experience of folks like Roy. Well, Roy, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And I'm, and I'm glad you had a great day. And I, I really loved your impressions. And congrats on uh, nearly acing the, uh, the, the blind <laughs> test. I'm going to have to send you a little gold star or something like that. Better than Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys next time.